Schedule reliability, I think that's a, a very good uh, parameter to look at. Um, what's at one point uh, below 35% uh, globally. So this means that the vessels uh, basically were not calling the ports they were supposed to. Um, and, and this went down yeah, to 35%. It's uh, coming back up again now, um, and we are seeing uh, some relief on, on, on certain routes. <laughs>
at one point, right, where there were too many uh, containers there, there were a significant amount of uh, vessels sitting uh, on the U.S. West Coast uh, that could not discharge because uh, um, there were there was not enough berthing space, etc. So mm -hmm. we have seen some significant uh, um, disruptions in this. Uh, it has normalized a little bit uh, more, um, but uh, there's different events I think that happened over the past uh, probably. Uh, 18 to 24 months that have affected this. Everybody knows about the uh, Suez Canal incident. Then we had uh, labor disputes on, 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 on the West Coast. Then we had vessel congestion on the West Coast, uh, et cetera. So this has really uh, impacted uh, us globally uh, overall. Schedule mm -hmm. reliability, I think that's a, a very good uh, parameter to look at. Um, what's at one point uh, below 35% uh, globally. So this means that the vessels uh, basically were not calling the ports they were supposed to. Um, and, and this went down yeah, to 35%. It's uh, coming back up again now, um, and we are seeing uh, some relief on, on, on certain routes. And uh, uh, are we at 50% uh, less cost than we were at the peak of the containers? Um, I think this is not, uh, um, or this is something that we basically uh, can't generalize. You have to then look into specifics. So, so then you cannot take a, a, a macro picture basically on this. This is very specific in, in certain routes. Um, there, there are changes it. and it's a very dynamic uh, um, uh, environment right now. Um, I think it's a combination today of uh, not only cost, but it's also container availability. Uh, there has to be a vessel. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not all about just looking at, at, at figures and, and at hard figures and numbers. Um, I think mm. what has happened in the industry, uh, I always feel that we were somewhat of a, an invisible industry because uh, the product was moving. And if you really look at uh, the average consumer, the average consumer goes into the store, buys a bottle of wine, but doesn't think how many people yeah. have actually touched the product, right? And, and so now uh, we uh, come into a more of the C-level suite of uh, uh, um, our customers where all of a sudden supply chain and transportation cost is a relevant topic. But uh, to answer your question, yeah, it's not uh, um, it's not a blanket statement that you can make uh, that that uh, the costs have changed. Uh, there are changes in the market. The market is also changing. Uh, I think this is also linked um, in 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 part again. If you look specifically on the wine side, that you have certain areas where wine is available. You have the southern hemisphere that's now coming up with the harvest, so they still have a lot of wine in the tank. So uh, it's to be seen basically um, how how this will develop. I think I think you know you uh, see a lot of uh, movement before you know the Nielsen's and the IRIs of the world on producing the data, right? Because I think most of the data is from the retail side uh, when we talk about data and you know insights. I think uh, you are sort of the first uh, ones who get uh, purchase orders or bill of loadings to get to see. Uh, so let me give us some uh, trends on which countries are shipping more, where you've seen some mo uh, movements, and which uh, countries are buying more. Let's say, you know, I, mean, I think we, we all can see that China is buying less and sh uh, sending less, right? But maybe you can validate some facts. You know, same goes with Europe, Australia, France. You know, just throw us some uh, three big uh, wins, export, and three big import uh, countries. Yeah, listen, I think uh, um, it's a very good point. I think if you look at uh, um, Australia to China, um, of course, today is no longer a market because of the trade dispute that these countries have and wine is affected by this. And all of a sudden, uh, the Australian wine industry lost one of their major markets, which was China. Um, mm -hmm. and, and this has shifted. Then um, we believe uh, today, based on the data we are seeing, that uh, South Africa and Chile, for example, are the benefactors of this, that they are selling more product uh, uh, to China because of the change, uh, we've also seen some wine companies that came out and said uh, they changed their production from some of their Australian wines um, into, into other, other um, uh, origins, basically. Um, mm -hmm. We have seen a, a, a slowdown in shipping from uh, South America to, to the US market uh, because of okay. the disruption also on the West Coast. Uh, so the West Coast was affected. And of course, uh, um, if you look at the, um, the wine uh, production industry in, in, uh, in the US, it's, it's very much uh, around the Oakland uh, port area, right? So it's very much Northern California, um, where Oakland is really the only option uh, to go to. Um, and we've seen that there was a slowdown um, on uh, particularly Oakland and, and, and the whole West Coast, because it's also quite uh, difficult to truck cargo from uh, Southern California to Northern California, especially again on bulk wine with weight restrictions, uh, weight of containers, et cetera. Um, I think in Europe, what we have seen um, on, on some of the supermarket chains, um, 
they have changed probably their uh, patterns to order more European wines because they were, of course, coming much quicker, especially in the UK. Uh, mm, that's true. That I think I think are, habits got changed, right, in this disruption. Exactly. So. Yeah. In, and and so there we see a change. I think on the um, on the way that wine buyers are purchasing wine, but we are of course not in that part of the business. We only see the transportation. Um, mm. I think uh, for me, uh, South Africa is is, is a key example. Uh, if you look at South Africa, it's one of the fastest routes into Europe. It's one of the quickest uh, uh, ways to get wine into Europe. Uh, but with that disruption. Um, they have seen uh, a drop, which has now picked up again, and uh, South African wine is is being bought. Um, Australia, um, also, we are seeing again the uh, movement of bulk wine, especially, is picking up, and it seems they have a lot of wine. Um, I think one of the uh, one of the key uh, factors that we are seeing today, and, and again, I'm talking mainly about bulk wine, is container availability, um, because 20 foot containers uh, are getting. Uh, uh, are less and less produced globally because uh, we call it the apple effect, right? So everything is very, very small. So it puts it's being put into 40 foot containers, uh, consumer goods, high tech, etc. Everything is shipping in 40 footers, uh, and carriers are not investing necessarily in uh, producing. Oh, that's that's a good insight. I, I was not aware of that. So so this is a change in 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 the business. Uh, it's really moving towards a 40 foot market. Uh, we are looking into alternatives with uh, 40 foot containers. Um, it's viable in some markets, but not in all markets. Uh, changes also the habits a little bit. And again, we're talking mainly about uh, bulk wine, which is a, a key focus. Um, of course, if, if you look at bottled wine, that is moving in uh, 40 foot boxes already in, in, in a lot of places. Maybe Australia and New Zealand uh, are the exceptions where 20 foot are still dominant. Um, but this is, this is one of the, the key areas that we are focused on uh, to, to look at mm. uh, container availability and uh, also alternative options in regards to uh, utilization of, um, of containers and other sources, essentially. And you are seeing uh, uh, overall the volume still the same uh, for China imports usually or, you know, it's, it's way down globally, you know, uh, as far as China consuming. China overall is, is is still quite strong. Uh, again, there have okay. been changes, but uh, um, I think the the Chinese market uh, is still consuming. Um, now, for us, of course, we are looking purely at volume, but not necessarily value, right? So, for us, yeah, uh, we look at volume, but we don't uh, uh, necessarily uh, look at uh, what what value is shipping. We are seeing on the beer side, um, China is still very very strong, uh, basically, um, and I think it just uh, uh, some of the uh, probably. Patterns have changed on the consumption, right? Where consumption is no longer in uh, uh, the on-trade, but more in the off-trade, right? Where people mm. drink at home much more, um, and and this has changed. I mean, we've done uh, quite a bit of uh, um, research on this during during the height of COVID uh, uh, on, on on the German market because we have very good data there. And, and again, this is not our business. Our business is moving containers, yeah. uh, but True. we had seen there that, uh, um, of course. Uh, uh, I think shopping has become a necessity rather than a luxury. And and when mm. uh, you go normally and you plan and I say, oh, this store has a very good uh, uh, promotion on certain products and this, uh, where you only went into one store and you bought what was available, right? And so I think in Germany there, um, we could see on the numbers, the patterns have changed and we've shown this actually to some of our clients, which uh, uh, was quite interesting to look at basically. In, in, nice. In, in the way people have changed. I really want to add uh, three or four questions for the U.S. buyers, you know, uh, so let's say you know, there are big bottlers like O'Neill and there are actual, you know, wineries that are buying like Delicato and so on. Right. So uh, what are the three or four things that you think that U.S. buyers can see and, you know, where are the opportunities for them that you can recommend them? Like maybe, hey, South Africa is, is a gold mine right now or, you know, throw us some insights where they can really go and grab these deals. Um, well, I think I think it's overall right, uh, uh, um, and we work with with some of of the brokers out there that, that are also coming to us. I think uh, what what is happening right now, um, it's basically uh, not just the price of the wine; it's also transportation. It's it's a relevant piece basically in 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 the calculation mm. uh, where the customers can look um, and calculate how much does it cost. So uh, it can be that a very attractive wine price probably doesn't jive uh, with uh, the transportation costs that's associated with it. It also depends on uh, um, what is the lead time, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, uh, there, mm. there are many factors there. Um, I think today we we, um, we are seeing quite frequently that we are receiving a request from customers that was previously maybe not the case, who are saying, give us an outline of, uh, let's say, uh, the key uh, Southern Hemisphere countries and we want to see um, what the transportation cost is. They plug it into a calculation 
and they look how much is the cost of the transportation for that uh, particular product, right? And we've seen this um, virtually from all origins. Um, Understood. Where, uh, where, where we are really seeing uh, um, a change that 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 uh, our customers maybe look at transportation before they make a decision on, on on where they're buying wines, which is a change, I believe, at least from uh, what happened pre-COVID, where people were going out, buying wine, finding the right wine, buying it, and then transportation was kind of uh, an add-on to a certain extent. And today, this is a, a primary... It's focus. part of the buying decision now. It's yeah, part of the buy Exactly, correct. Um, yeah. To the West so, Coast, I mean... The, yeah, so sorry. Uh, to, to, to nail it down, like, you know, like if you just had to just... I, don't, I mean, you, we don't have to be perfect here, but... You know, the perfect, uh, fastest, and the cheapest uh, ship movement, and the uh, and a good deal. Which what is I can see that Argentina comes. Uh, you know, you said South Southern Hemisphere. South so, America. what yeah, comes I to mind? South like, which country? I think South America. I think there are also uh, uh, patterns, basically, because you you have to look in in South America. We're moving also into the fruit season, into the salmon season. Then uh, freight rates, of course, are very high because these are reefer containers. They are generally. Uh, uh, paying a higher freight. Uh, so South America is always good uh, uh, in, in, in okay. terms of, uh, especially on the US, if you go to the West Coast, because it's West Coast to West Coast, uh, a lot of the Argentinian products uh, are moved uh, also via uh, Chile, basically. So there's a cross on these trucking that we're doing quite a bit from uh, uh, from the Argentinian side uh, into into Chile and then moving it up uh, uh, to, um, to Oakland again. Um, there's today, unfortunately, no direct service um, into Auckland, right? Uh, so we are um, shipping this with at least one transshipment from, from Chile, um, either from uh, Valparaiso or San Antonio generally. That's the two key ports. So that is uh, quite quite good. Um, South Africa, again, also very, uh, very interesting, of course, with a, a longer lead time and a, a longer uh, transit time, basically. Um, in South Africa, uh, I think uh, containers are uh, one of the key mm. uh, issues because it's Cape Town board. Uh, so there has to be a, a certain level of pre-planning and, and, and really uh, trucking, et cetera, has to be set up very well. Um, uh, Australia, I think um, Adelaide is a, a smaller port, obviously, uh, for Australia. So today the port of Adelaide uh, um, has only uh, six services that are coming in. There's still a service uh, that goes directly to the US West Coast. Um, here, again, it's more a planning uh, issue. So uh, I think you can't go in and say, hey, next week I need to ship 100 containers. That's not possible. Uh, we need a lead time. Uh, we recommend usually between four to six weeks so that uh, we can mm. prepare for this. Um, Melbourne generally is, is a little bit less of an issue. Melbourne and Sydney uh, are less of an issue. Also two relevant ports for, for wine. Um, yeah, and, 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 and that's really in, in, the, uh, in the southern hemisphere there. Um, we are seeing some interest on, on, on Europe as well, but uh, generally European bulk wine to the west coast um, is, is not as big and not as relevant as uh, the southern hemisphere basically to the west coast. And, and I think then, of course, uh, uh, the next point is also uh, to plan the deliveries uh, because Oakland as a port is uh, quite uh, busy as well. And uh, of course, you need, uh, especially for the bulk wine, uh, special chassis. So all this has to be uh, uh, planned correctly to avoid additional costs, basically. On the you know customer side, like this is mainly for the shipping, uh, you know, people in each wineries or distilleries. You know, uh, any tips and advice, or what, what's your ideal good customer? You know, where you think that okay, this guy's get shipping. You know. Uh, how would you describe that person? Um, I think every customer is good, right? So of course, uh, uh, but, you know, I think <laughs> I'm, the, uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, a, a nice customer, like wow, that yeah, was yeah, saved no, no, my time. Just, uh, communication is the key. At the end of the day, it's communication, it's expectations and managing expectations. Um, uh, communication between, uh, of course, the buyer, uh, the uh, the supplier. What is the expectation? Uh, um, uh, on bulk wine, it's also a sample approval, et cetera. What's the process? What's the timeline? So um, generally, um, if we have, uh, the more lead time we have, the better it is. And, and also then managing expectations, right? And it's uh, often also the case to say, um, well, uh, it's one thing to ship the, the containers, but it's also how can we manage the delivery and, and, and what is really the capacity? So generally, what we do with a lot of our customers, we sit together and we're saying, um, if you buy, I don't know, 40, 42 containers is generally 1 million liters, right? Uh, um, and we ship 1 million liters. How many um, containers can you take per day? And is this realistic uh, to do this? So what are, what are this uh, seven to eight questions that you think, you know, uh, you want them to ask, actually, you know, uh, and, and, sit and discuss in your meeting? 
Yeah, uh, so so generally what we ask is, uh, so so how many uh, liters are you going to buy? How many containers okay. uh, does this relate to? Uh, what's the shipping time frame? Um, do and that's per year. You're talking about yearly planning? Uh, yearly planning, or also we do see a lot of spot buys, right? And and we see okay. sometimes also some of our customers, and again, we're talking mainly a U.S. market, right? Where a U.S. winery is is, is buying some wine, then then we are sitting and we're saying, um, is there, are there any restrictions? You know, um, is the winery, are there summer closures? Are there closures for uh, uh, the harvest? Um, do you have an agreement that the wine has to be evacuated at a, at a certain point, right? And then we really prepare a timeline and we're saying, uh, this is how we prepare the shipping. If, as an example, uh, um, a winery can only unload uh, uh, one container a day, I make it very simple, you have five days uh, of working, and then we would not ship 50 containers in one week, right? Because then we would know it would take too long time uh, to deliver them. So really, this is uh, the, the key question is, um, what is the infrastructure on, on both ends? How can we uh, support this? Um, how much do you buy? If it's a significant amount, we also need to make sure that the containers are there, that we have the labor there. Um, do uh, the supplier, uh, is the supplier aware of what is necessary um, in terms of loading bulk wine? Does, uh, uh, has the supplier done, done this before? In general, most of the suppliers, of course, uh, have done it before. Do they need technical assistance? Um, and these are really uh, uh, the key factors. Um, have you already bought the wine? Is the contract already in place? Um, and all these things, we, we are sitting together and um, we're working it out. Um, what what time frame are we looking at? And then really working with the uh, um, with with our customers basically. And uh, in most cases, we either have a, a joint uh, discussion or we use our network at at Origin to really kind of become I would say the extended arm of of our customer because in a lot of mm -hmm. cases the customers um, in the US or in, in most other countries as well do not necessarily presentation within the origin countries um, and we are acting almost as the extended arm in terms of uh, uh, communication so I, I think you you want their schedule I mean mainly like you're looking for a good plan right. like a advanced schedule a volume schedule and uh, the shipment schedule you know right. and in liters and in containers uh, yes, correct. and then obviously you try the, the the closer the customer is to the schedule the better uh, it is for everyone. Correct, and, and the more communication there. And then we also look in, of course, uh, um, is, is the, the uh, vessel scheduled to depart at the time? Uh, what are the restrictions at the supplier side? So, so it's really, we make a, we make a game Got plan. Uh, yeah, that, that we put, uh, I always say in, in transportation, that we put a virtual puzzle together, right? And, and, and we put the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, and then if all of this works, uh, then the supply chain also works, right? And the customer receives the, the goods. Where, where do you think, you know, uh, you've seen a lot of uh, companies waste money or end up in, in wasting money, right? Uh, you know, an example that, that, that comes to my mind is, let's say you send a container, but I was not ready. My wine is not ready. And now I'm telling you, can I, can I just hold it at my winery for two days? You know, whatever. So uh, what examples uh, come to your mind, uh, which are actually just creating more, losses for them yeah listen i mean i think it's uh, um, it's storage capacity of course uh, which california does not have but if you look at europe uh, um, a lot of the the bottlers do not have storage capacities right and of course if all of a sudden this is uh, uh, um, uh, causing problems because there's too many containers sitting there i mean what what we have seen and which we had not seen in the past uh, very much uh, because this is not Part of our business uh, but we have uh, in some cases seen that all of a sudden dry goods were not available right so no cartons mm -hmm. were available uh, no bottles were available and all of a sudden uh, containers were sitting at the port because there was nowhere to put the wine um, because it was uh, uh, planned for bottling and and but if of course if there's no bottles then you can't bottle right and and this is something that we hadn't seen and i think a lot of our customers had also not experienced this in the past um, where all of a sudden uh, they, they had a situation where the wine was there, which usually the wine is not there, but the wine was there, but other products that they needed to put it in the bottle and to then ultimately ship it were not there. Um, and, and this is something we can't influence, right? So this is something where we are seeing that some customers were uh, probably hit by surprise with this uh, type of uh, issue. Um, and, and we were also sometimes surprised, right? Because we had not seen this in the past. Uh, mm. This, this has, this has, I think, changed uh, uh, a little bit how customers uh, uh, look at this on, on the Balkan side. I think uh, a lot of customers have also increased their stock holdings in general uh, to satisfy the needs of their market. Um, and, and that's also another change that, that we are uh, seeing. If you were uh, handling a winery shipping division, Horst, you know, what, what are three or four things uh, you would 
you know, from the bird's eye view, start looking at? Um, I think I think it's a, a, a lot of this again is planning and, and, and communication, uh, having the wine ready. Uh, um, of course, there's a technical piece that we are not involved in. Uh, what what is the request of of the winemaker and of the customer in terms of how the wine is to be prepared? Um, having this ready and, and and again communicating right and not waiting until the last minute um, to do something. Really work with the schedule. Um, have have the wine uh, uh, ready when when uh, committed and then uh, really ship it. But from a from a planning perspective, uh, communication is key, right? And and set it up and and be realistic, right? And not uh, wait uh, until last minute. And um, what we have seen is uh, sometimes also they were coming very very close to a. Uh, a shipping window, right? And all of a sudden, everybody rushes uh, because something is not ready, something has not uh, worked. So it's really working on a schedule and, and try not to make any changes. Be realistic uh, uh, and not to try make changes last minute. That's, I think, what I... Sorry. If I was uh, if I was uh, uh, in a cellar, um, that's how my planning would be, right? To say, um, I plan it, I plan the week, uh, um, and and I really plan it in a, in a realistic fashion. Yeah, that's... The, the the key point. I'm afraid to say this, but my gut says that I'm sure Germany must be perfect in executing, you know, this compared to US or China or Asian countries, right? Like, uh, <laughs> I, I think I think uh, 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 transportation is never perfect. Yeah, so nobody is perfect, right? And uh, uh, so no, I think also Germans are not uh, uh, are not perfect in this. Uh, um, so we also see challenges there. Um, no, I think it's a, it's really a, a mixture of all of the various right. countries uh, with with various ways. Again, it all boils down to to, to communication, right? And and sure. of course, there are unpredicted things that you cannot uh, uh, foresee. Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, the the, the classic uh, uh, freight forward excuse is the truck broke down, right? Uh, but this does happen. Right? In truth, it does happen. Or we uh, had cases in wineries where the pump all of a sudden broke down, right? And and. How do you do this? Uh, or, or some other uh, thing happened. We had uh, uh, at one winery that was shut down because of a, of a fire alarm, right? During a, a period where we were shipping a significant amount of containers. And, and all these things uh, affect, obviously, the shipping. Uh, what we do see uh, in, in some countries, and, and uh, we see this, uh, for example, um, again, in, in the US, on Oakland, on export, uh, sometimes we're also preloading containers. So we are staging containers. Preloaded, then uh, we have a very short shipping window uh, to get the containers into the port for shipping onto the vessel. Um, so instead of uh, waiting last minute, we are loading the containers a little bit in advance, uh, maybe a week before, uh, put them uh, in, a, in, a, in a holding uh, a yard, and then deliver them when the shipping window opens. So this is also something that we are seeing more and more happening uh, from a planning perspective. So I was just going to ask you about three or four good hacks where you know, something different can be done. Now, one, one example is, let's say, 2023. If I just look at the whole year, you know, are there any months where you think container prices that you're predicting, you know, maybe going down because of the global shipment volumes? Obviously, Christmas time is busy, for example, right? So other times where maybe wineries uh, who don't have problem with holding inventories uh, and giving credit terms, maybe can use those couple of months in moving more volume? Um, no, and generally, um, I, I think uh, this is to be seen, right? Uh, your crystal ball is as good as mine in terms of what is happening in the uh, uh, in, in the shipping industry. There, there are a lot of changes and there's a lot of movement right now within uh, the shipping industry. Um, I think, as I said, I think uh, previously, I think it's a combination of really um, container availability, price for transportation, uh, vessel capacity um, that, that, that we need to look at. Uh, I don't think there's any better or worse month but what i would say is uh, so is there a, is there seeing, like a yeah. is, yeah. is there like an index or in your dashboard in your systems where i can see uh, get a global view of container availability and the, the supply right the excess so maybe yeah. that is the time i say all right you know can you give me 10% discount i'm just trying to uh, you know find a way where wineries can uh, figure out a way to sort of say 5% 10% in in using this whole system um, yeah, I mean, we have, we have obviously, we, we are managing uh, container availability um, internally. We are seeing this. Um, I think uh, um, sometimes we are offering maybe, a, uh, and this is not the right word, but an economy and a premium option probably, right? This is probably for lay in layman's terms. So we are saying um, we can give you a rate um, uh, at, a, at a certain price point, but we will not guarantee uh, a certain shipping pattern or reversely. We are saying, so, you, so you either fly Ryan Air or British Airways. Correct. Yes, exactly. Something like this, right? So, so where we are saying uh, um, we give you a, 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 we can give you a, a several tiers of, of a pricing, right? Um, and then we have a fixed schedule, right? So, so this is also partially a little bit 
Um, I think what we are looking for really is consistency and consistency is the, the best thing um, that, that you can have. And this would be every week you ship a certain number of containers. If, if this is the case, then obviously there's a good planning. Um, we can work uh, with our partners and that uh, would deliver also uh, potentially then a saving um, or a, a better price uh, to do this, right? Of course, uh, and, and I think this is something um, that we can also say, um, the transportation business is a very non-committing business, yeah, because we have a lot of customers that are saying, yeah, I want uh, uh, 10 containers reserved, but at the end of the day, they only ship five containers every week, yeah, and uh, then we don't have to, uh, we cannot charge them for 10 containers, yeah, and, and we always use the example, if you go tomorrow and you uh, order 10 iPhones, you also have to pay for 10 iPhones, and you cannot say, um, I only take five now, right? So this is uh, kind of the thing where this is for us a little bit of a change in uh, uh, in what we're doing. And this is also where we work with customers to say, give give us a plan. If, if we have a plan and we have consistent volume every week and uh, over 52 weeks, then we can do, uh, uh, it's much, 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 much better. But of course, uh, again, this is uh, different scenarios for different uh, also countries. If you look at uh, yeah. different regions, if you look at Europe, most of the wine that is shipped in bulk, if we talk bulk again, also ends up in the bottle ultimately, right? Where of course a lot of wine that's shipped to uh, to California and to the US um, is also used for blending and, and for other purposes. So it's a it's a very different pattern basically in terms of in terms of buying. So uh, um, I think sometimes it's also uh, interesting if, for example, uh, and we had this case uh, uh, last year that some of our customers are buying a large lot and they are saying. We buy X number um, of liters. Uh, we have made a commitment. Uh, we believe the winery needs a certain time frame. Uh, we only have so much time. Can you ship? And how many containers can you ship a week? Uh, we can accommodate this on the other end. And that's of course also interesting for us. And then we deal with it from a perspective of buying spot on uh, spot deals on a vessel where we are seeing um, that there's capacity, for example, available. So this it's a very uh, um, 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 fluid market, basically, really, and a, and a very fluid dynamic in, in terms of the market. And of course, we also have uh, um, oil prices, uh, et cetera, that are influencing this um, truck availability. Yeah, So it's it's really, um, uh, we always say there's, uh, um, in our industry, I think we have now 16 to 18 touch points that a forwarder touches from uh, customs clearance to uh, trucking mm -hmm. at both sides to uh, um uh, in the U.S., you also have FDA. Uh, you have all kinds of things that that are basically uh, having an impact on on the supply chain. This is for you know uh, the people who are not so much in the bulk industry, right? Uh, just in layman terms, can you explain how this uh, spot market, spot pricing, what what does this mean? Oh, it means that uh, uh, maybe um, um, uh, a winery or buyer um, is in need of a certain uh, varietal, or they they are looking at it. Um, and, and then they're, they're trying to buy some wine and they're looking uh, what uh, and where is wine available. And then they're going out and they're buying, obviously, the transportation first, they're buying the product, but then they're buying the transportation afterwards. Um, and uh, they're coming and they're saying, uh, we make a, a deal for a certain number of containers. Um, this has to go very quickly. Um, can you do it? What is the spot price? And uh, depending on the time of uh, uh, and, and, and the current situation, then in a particular market, um, sometimes this is very attractive and sometimes, of course, it's uh, not very attractive. Mm. Based. So it depends on uh, uh, the market uh, conditions at the time. Um, and then, yeah, pe people um, uh, and, and customers are, are coming to us. They're saying, hey, I have a very interesting deal. Some winery and a winery partner uh, offered me something. Uh, we also often see this if, uh, for example, they have a foreign winemaker who still has associations with uh, winemakers in, in his home country or home country. Um, and then a deal comes up and, and, and we are offering a price for it. And, and if it works uh, from a cost perspective, we are seeing this. Um, it's not very common. It's mainly common in, uh, in, in the U.S. market, but we see it uh, uh, elsewhere as well, where then smaller deals are. Or um, a supermarket uh, has put out a, a bid, for example, for a mm. certain volume for promotion. And then we are seeing a customer who comes to us and says, hey, um, I have bought, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 million liters uh, um, or 5 million liters. Um, I need to ship them. Uh, the promotion is scheduled for uh, a certain month. When do we need to ship? And, and we're looking at it and we're providing rates for this. One thing that comes to my mind is, let's say I'm a winery and I'm pitching to big buyers like Tesco and Walmart, you know, or Aldi and so on, right? Uh, as a winery, uh, I think a lot of times uh, these big buyers want to control the logistics as well and want to really have their, you know, uh, their decision making and part of it. 
what kind of uh, data or a presentation that you think uh, can a potential winery uh, do to a potential buyer? Let's say I'm pitching Walmart today about my bulk business and private label business. You know, uh, I want to add three or four slides about freight. You know, what do you think those three or four slides can be that, hey, Walmart, you can be involved with these three things? Yeah, I think uh, it depends uh, a little bit. As you say, in, in most cases, most of uh, um, the customers are trying to control the freight themselves. So they are, they are controlling the freight themselves um, in a lot of countries, uh, again, in the, in the southern hemisphere, maybe except Argentina. It's FOP port, so so the winery takes care of the transportation towards the port, and then uh, the the, oh, right. basically, or the buyer takes care of it. Uh, um, on the other end, um, I think in in a lot of cases um, on bulk wine, especially um, the supermarkets are not directly involved; they're using somebody uh, as, a, as a middleman almost because they don't have the capacity. I mean, we know of one uh, German discounter that bottles themselves, right? So they do everything themselves. Um, they also then control, uh, of course, the freight for this. Uh, but in general, um, uh, the, the buyers are not um, buying directly. Um, they might buy directly from the wineries, but uh, the supermarket themselves do not bottle. They contract this out to a third party. And then in some cases, this third party uh, uh, basically becomes our customer. Um, so again, mm -hmm. this is a more, uh, there are more parties involved, basically. As, as, a, as a winery, I think uh, um, it ultimately boils down to the product and, and the cost of the product. A, a winery does not have a lot of influence on this um, in terms of uh, um, in terms of making decisions because on the land side operations at destination, the winery would not be involved in, in most cases. This would be taken care of directly either by the customer or by a third party bottler or by somebody else, basically. So, so in, in, in that regards. In, a, in, so, a case, in the case of bottled wine, it's a little bit different because bottled wine, you could offer a rate that is delivered to a market, which we're also seeing uh, where we are dealing with wineries, where the winery can uh, uh, essentially control the lag up uh, to the distribution center, for example, of the customer. In bulk wine, it's a little bit different because uh, somebody has to obviously uh, manage the bottling and has to manage uh, then the distribution for this. So yeah. uh, India and Australia free trade deal. Are you seeing any movements? Are you seeing any things happening there? No, not yet. Um, India is a super interesting market. Uh, um, and uh, there's, I think, uh, uh, a wine culture developing. Um, and uh, um, But wine, of course, was extremely highly taxed in India. Uh, we do believe there there is definitely a market. It's a super, super interesting market. Uh, we have a setup in, in, in India. Um, we have seen a lot of uh, hard liquor, so spirits basically uh, moving. Um, but wine is, is just starting. So it's really an evolving market, but uh, it has a lot of potential and a lot of legs in, in India. And uh, we have not seen this yet, uh, but it's slowly starting. So we're talking to our colleagues in, in um, Australia. Uh, funnily enough, uh, we also have some colleagues here in France uh, um, that are from India and uh, they are the same way, right? So all of a sudden we are starting really to uh, to see some engagement on the wine side in India. And, and, and we believe there's a, a big potential for that. Uh, 2022 US harvest. Do you expect wineries uh, to buy more bulk wine outside of US or you think they've got enough? That I can't answer. I think uh, that depends a little bit. Um, I do believe, yes, wineries will start again to, to ship because... Uh, um, the, the to import, I mean, the, uh, to, to import, import yeah, in to US. Import, to import, yeah, yeah, to import, because the shipping market is relaxing a little bit. Um, and I think okay. the wineries, some of the wineries also, uh, from what we know, there, there are some multi-vintage deals uh, where the wineries have also already bought some wine. Uh, the market is relaxing and we are seeing a, a, an increase of uh, requests already for uh, shipments uh, coming from the key origins, right, in the Southern Hemisphere. So, yes, I do think there will be a, a bulk wine will be moving. So if there was a simple way you can measure bulk wine, let's say flexi tank, you know, shipments, you know, uh, which are the top three uh, buyers right now for bulk wine, in, in country terms, wise? In terms of volume? In terms of volume? In, in terms of volume and country. Yeah, country. Um, I, would, I would think US for sure. Uh, uh, you have the UK always very strong and, and, uh, um, and, and, and Germany then in, in Europe. And then you also have, uh, um, of course, China uh, that, that is doing quite a bit. Um, I, I thought that Germany was one and US was like three or four. You think US is leading the way in, in far as volume? Uh, yeah, but you have to also consider Germany is one uh, also because uh, you're considering intra-European imports, right? That are moving by tank truck, et cetera, uh, that, that, are, that are a part of this. Um, oh, you're just talking about ocean. Ocean, exactly. Ocean, ocean transport. Then otherwise, US, uh, US um, or Germany is one and US uh, probably comes after this. But uh, 
if you look at pure ocean and you look at deep sea, what we would consider true deep sea import, um, uh, I think it's US, UK, Germany are probably the three key markets with China also uh, uh, being a part of this. But we're also seeing uh, uh, products moving in other countries, right? So that, the, okay. that, that I'm putting, but the key markets for bulk wine are those. So they are the most important and volume wise, but what are the fastest three growing? You know, if you've seen the growth, uh, which comes to mind? Um, I think we've seen some some growth in uh, um, definitely also in, in, in places like the Netherlands, right? That, that's always strong, but uh, often also depending on uh, um, on bottling capacity, et cetera. Um, um, apart from this, we are, we are seeing uh, France also importing some uh, that, that are then using a bottling capacity uh, that, that that is really growing on on the bulk wine side, um, and apart from this, yeah, I think China is still the market that that has a substantial uh, growth uh, um, potential, um, and and we're not there yet. But I think it's also because um, uh, um, today a lot of people cannot travel to China, right? So what we are hearing from a lot of uh, the community is that buyers uh, from China are, are not traveling, but also wineries cannot travel. A lot of the uh, wine uh, shows, especially are canceled and are not happening. So um, I think China uh, is something that that will come up. Japan is also very interesting. So in Japan, we see uh, some uptick uh, in, in bulk wine. Um, it's something where value wines uh, are coming in. So so we're seeing this really uh, um, as a movement uh, uh, all over the world where we are seeing more and more inquiries uh, uh, about bulk wine because um, a lot of countries have now bottling capacity and they can do it. This was not necessarily a concept they were focusing on, but I think it's also a shift in consumer behavior. Yeah, especially younger people want to try something new. They don't necessarily just want to try their wine from their home country if it's a wine producing country. They want to see something new, and and so we are we are um, definitely seeing an uptick in, in in several countries. Uh-huh.